episode of Experts on Purpose. In today's episode, we are going to find out from Jane how she took her passion for organizing and decluttering and converted that into a successful business. Jane is a Swiss Canadian life biz organizer, speaker, author, and university instructor whose passion is in decluttering spaces and organizing business processes. Jane wrote her first book in 2016 to help friends get more organized. It ultimately gained international attention and this allowed Jane to turn her passion into a profitable business called Organized Jane. Her global reach has helped thousands get clarity and get organized with her critically acclaimed books, Organizing for Your Lifestyle, as well as Decluttering for Dummies published by Wiley Publishing and through her Business Booster course. With a proven track record in both lifestyle and business decluttering, Jane has spent the last decade helping people become better versions of themselves. Hey Jane, welcome to Experts on Purpose. Hello, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure because I just loved your story of how you moved from being in a cement business to actually following your dreams and establishing a business around decluttering people's lives. So let's get started from the very beginning, Jane. When was the first time in your life that you realized that decluttering is your passion? Well, a lot of people ask me that. And it's actually when I was six years old, I really <laughs> began to notice that I was organized or disorganized. And people laugh, but that's actually been a lot of research. And between the ages of six and eight is when you can see if kids are going to start to form habits of being organized. And it's also a great time to help form those habits. So right. naturally, it just it was in me. I don't know what it was, but I just always have loved organizing. And that's when it started for me. Wow. OK, uh, but I'm sure later you would have um, you know, studied all the traditional stuff in college and uh, career. So at what point in your career did you go back to your six-year-old self and realize that, hey, I could actually be doing this professionally? You know, it's, it's, that's a good question too, because a lot of us, um, I'm from Canada and we just, you have this notion that you have to go to school, get a regular job mm -hmm. and go to university. So that's, that's a very traditional career path I had too. And I started my business actually right like 10 years or 15 years ago now, and then failed the first time and then went mm -hmm. back to the corporate world for 10 years and then restarted it. So it took a lot of mindset shift and probably a lot of your listeners too, just getting out of your comfort zone and really just following your passion, but it's not easy. Hmm, absolutely. So what was like the turning point for you? Because you tried it once, it did not succeed. So what are the things you did differently the second time, which made you confidently quit your job? Hiring a business coach. That's the number one thing I always tell everybody, because hmm. the reason I failed the first time, didn't scare to market myself, all of these. And back in the day, like two, early 2000s, we didn't have a lot of podcasts hmm. and um, online support. So there was lacking as well. So today I feel like we have so much of that. So if you can't even afford a business coach yet, or don't know where to find one, there's so many resources online today that mm -hmm. I think are wonderful to help people get started. Yeah, absolutely. So that made a huge difference, right? So oh, how yes. was the initial years like for you, Jane, when you started the business recently, uh, where were you getting your initial clients from? How did they know that you are the go-to expert for decluttering? Well, it takes a long time to build that up. And I started just um, still getting consulting contracts with, you know, mm -hmm. from my previous work and trying to make money. And it just takes time. It takes people 30 times, they say, to see you and hear your message before they actually trust or want to buy from you. So just sharing the message everywhere I can with mm -hmm. friends, family, online. And it, that took years and I'm still doing it every day. So I feel like you have to first reach within your own network and then just keep going. And it takes it doesn't take, it takes five plus years to even get established and then some. So it doesn't happen overnight, but it will happen if you're consistent. Yeah. I like the fact that you mentioned about using the current network that we already have. And a lot of times we overlook that and we try to just build our Instagram following. By the way, your Instagram pro pro profile is amazing. I love oh, thank you. all the stuff you're doing there. But thank you, you so much. I'm sure you would have reached that level after a while of being super consistent right so the initial set of people who worked with you were the people who already knew you 100 percent. they're the ones that i went to first and asked kind of you know what they're looking for and i didn't have a big following and i don't think we need a lot of you know 
vanity metrics or big phones, but you need to start somewhere and just asking your, your current network, how you can support them, what they're looking for, and then getting referrals from them. You don't even need any kind of following, but then it's good to, of course, start and, and build that up. Yeah. Uh, it's also nice to ask people what they need rather than deciding what they you think they need and going with an offer, right? Well, that really was my business coach that helped me figure that out <laughs> because uh-huh. a lot of times even I created a course, I thought people would buy it, they didn't buy it. So mm. her step in her program, and now um, I'm a big believer in this too, is going and asking people like um, ideal client interviews, asking them what they want, reaching out, doing surveys, things like that to getting, we always think we know what people want, but really asking is a big part of um, learning and, and figuring out what you can build for your future customers. Yeah, absolutely. So. When you knew that you had this um, divine gift, right, of decluttering things, did you also formally learn something around this area to build up that confidence or it was all your innate skills that you depended on? No, no, I learned my whole, like even in corporate, I would be taking process um, courses, you know, lean manufacturing, everything like that helps. I did a lot of research while I was even working in corporate. Mm. I had business degrees for the business side. So I did a lot of formal training, a lot of research on my own. So I think that combined with your passion really helps. Yeah, because this is one mistake I see a lot of new entrepreneurs make. Uh, They decide to become coaches in a particular area because they have achieved some result or it's just their passion. Uh, but they haven't really done any formal training in that area, uh, which is why they are not confident enough to attract high paying clients. So that's where they get, uh, you know, dejected, they feel uh, disappointed and they quit the business without realizing that they have not done the inner work to develop themselves first before offering it to others. That's 100% correct. And I feel like there's a lot of coaches, some say it's saturated, some say it's just beginning, but who knows. But if you do have a skill and a network that is really the best and continually building up your training will certainly help in that respect yeah so before this um call what i used to think about decluttering jane is all the knowledge that i've acquired from all these netflix shows where somebody (laughs) comes to your house and it becomes like you know uh, it looks like then your house begins to look like something from a lifestyle magazine and yep. uh, but I used to wonder what if what will happen after this expert leaves their house how are they going to maintain that and you well, rightly that, mentioned that in your bio that that's not your goal so what no. exactly is your goal for your clients and that's a like a really stereotype when we hear minimalist or decluttering we get scared we think we only have to have one pair of shoes or one couch but really it's just that's not what it's about it's about building it into your lifestyle Things don't have to look Instagram perfect. And those shows like the home edit are very, um, that's not real life, (laughs) but it's, you know, we can dream about closets like that, but you really want to do what's right for the client. So when your clients reach out to you, Jane, are they very clear as to why they need decluttering or is that uh, something that you need to educate your clients about? You know, it's, it's, a lot of people always say, I need to get more organized. I'm so cluttered. I think everybody can use it. It depends on what spectrum for your life, for your business, for your digital world. So I think it's the area that we can use help in, but everybody can use a coach. Even myself, I need help as well on on business stuff and sometimes decluttering too. I have to enlist support or organizing. So I think we can all use it, but it depends on what area. Yeah. But uh, what I'm uh... Uh, trying to understand is do they actually know the benefits because yeah obviously their home looks more organized their life looks more organized but what are some of the benefits of getting this done professionally because people uh, would have tried it themselves first right and then it just goes back to how it was a couple of weeks later so how does uh, an expert make a difference and also uh, what are some of the personal benefits like you also mentioned in your bio Jane that you become a better version of yourself when your life is decluttered. So can you just elaborate on that? Yeah, so that's a good question. And and sorry, I didn't answer correctly the first time, but it really is. A lot of people don't think of the benefits. They think of, you know, when they go to the gym, they'll see results, but we don't see the results per se in in decluttering and getting more organized, but they're there. And most importantly, with reduced stress and time. And that's the biggest one, I think, that organizing can bring people. And it's one of those benefits that we, can't see we can't touch so it's often hard to explain but when you feel that feeling of organization or you can achieve more in a day it's it's then you understand it so it's helping people understand that that benefit without even 
being able to show them in a in a physical way. Yeah. So what you do is a little different from what I've seen other uh, you know experts do. You mm-hmm. also focus on the business decluttering part. So how is lifestyle decluttering different from uh, the business aspect? Yeah, so I think this is a really important point because a lot of my clients own businesses, they want to own businesses and or they do and they and we're just decluttered. We're cluttered everywhere today from our homes, our businesses because we make them overcomplicated, our digital world, when we open up our computers, we don't even know where files are. So that's where I transitioned a bit more, especially for the pandemic, it, we mm. couldn't go into homes anymore. So that's where I focus on more the online space and the business and with my experience there. So it changed a bit to offering entrepreneurs six steps to help kind of declutter and organize their business. And I think that's, there's, that was kind of my niche that I was able to secure as well, but I'm still holistic. I believe you have to be organized in all aspects, but really yeah. I, my, my main course is actually helping you get your business organized. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear this Jane, because people curse the pandemic, right. For all the bad things it ha- brought exactly. to our lives, but it has also brought in some good things like how, you know, you could, uh, you know, Uh, take a different dimension in your business and yet help your clients. Exactly. And that's what I, um, I mean, so many new businesses have started so many changes. We can do zoom calls more often. We can like, it's changed a lot of things in a good way too, but of course there's a lot of um, bad things as well, but um, for getting organized, I think the pandemic has been great because we've spent more time at home, realized we have too much stuff. We're still shopping too much, but that's a different, <laughs> but it did help us realize that we need to get a bit more organized. Yeah. So when you typically meet with a business client, Jane, do you look at their current business processes and you trim all the unnecessary things or do you uh, uh, show them your six, six step methodology and see how they can adapt their business to it? How does that typically work like? So really uh, the six steps are good for any business mm-hmm. and it's six steps to organize your business in, you know, that's really what what it is and um it adapt it applies to any business because everybody thinks they're unique and of course everybody has unique product or service but the backbone of a business and how you set up your systems processes are not different and that's why this it works for really any business that's already been has a successful product or service right so you look at uh, every step in their day-to-day operations and you suggest how that can be uh, organized in a better way is that right yeah, so I do. Yeah, it, it goes into, you know, the six steps. Each one is basically focusing on the area of their business. The first one is on time management. What are their tasks? How do we unclutter their days? So that's really the first step that leads into all the rest of the five steps. Got it. Yeah. So I also noticed that you're not restricted. Uh, your business is not limited to just uh, services, but you also have products. Uh, which are available on your website as well. So how did you begin with selling products? Yes, I I, I guess the products just kind of evolved. I wanted to do a few uh-huh. fun things like sweatshirts. The books were on there, of course, but then right. my time cube became really popular with my clients. I used to use it. So then I wanted to make one that's a bit prettier and put my brand on it. So it just kind of evolved by things that I needed. Mm-hmm. And the cable management box was really a need in the market. Mm-hmm. A lot of with yeah. the pandemic, a lot of people are working from home, their cables are there. So the okay. product side evolved. It's not my main business, but it's just a few things that I like to help support my clients. Right. That's amazing. So you have them on your website and is it also available on Amazon or you intentionally kept it only on your website? Nope. They all are available on Amazon as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's easier for delivery in most places. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about your books, Jane. At what point did you realize that you needed to write a book on this subject to establish your expertise? You know, the first book I wrote was just for fun, for friends, because uh-huh. I just, a lot of people asked me and I thought, okay, I'm going to package it in a nice little book. And then that's when I thought, oh, people like this and maybe I can start a business. Yeah. And the, the next book was with a, with a dummy series. So it was with a publisher and that was really an honor to be able to work with the dummies yeah. and they are an exceptionally organized publishing group. They're reference style books, and they really are a great resource for people who want to figure out anything from decluttering to wine to whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. So your third book is on its way, am I right? Yes, it's currently being written. So that's, I can't say anything else about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's keep it a secret for now. Yes. So once you put out your books, have you changed? Have you observed any change in your business in the way people 
approach you? Um, you know, I don't think books will make you lose money on books. I always say there, there's something to really, there's something tangible to talk about. They give you a reference point. Mm -hmm. They're great for giving out as two people to get them to know you. It's like a really thick business card, yeah. but I'd say a book is just an addition to the services that you offer or products, or it's an addition to your business. I wouldn't say you can make a business only out of it, but it definitely helps for the credibility. And for, again, that tangibility of something to give people. Yeah. I agree with this, uh, Jane. A lot of clients ask me um, how, how much are they going to make out of the book? And I immediately ask them, uh, <laughs> how can you connect it with your business? Because that's the mm -hmm. only may, way you can really uh, create a positive ROI from the book project, right? 100%. Un un unless you're writing a book like Harry Potter or something. It's, uh, it's really crazy to think that you're, you're going to sell thousands of copies in the first month and uh, earn the money back but I really uh, like how your business and the book are kind of related to each other so people read the book and they want to find out more about you and they probably re uh, follow you on Instagram or your website and then the relationship with you begins exactly and I think it's that you know it it's just it takes time and people always think oh I'm going to release a book and then you know, sell it. Like you said, no, you won't. You'll be crickets unless you do. Okay. But it's all about just building up that brand and the visibility. And, you know, five years from now, maybe your book will sell more than it did when it first launched. But even before it's launching, you should be building it up, building your brand, building your messaging. And all of that really comes together. Right. So today, when somebody sees your Instagram profile, it, it looks so decluttered and so beautiful. So what are some of the tips you would like to give an um, upcoming entrepreneur who is probably already an expert in what they do, but they haven't really created their brand and their following on social media. What are some of the tips you would like to give someone to have the kind of followers you have on Instagram? So this is a good question. And I think, um, you know, my feed now, I do it myself. I used to have someone do it for me and it was even more pretty and professional, but then I, Took, it, took back ownership because people do really want to see the real stuff and the authenticity. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a, a having that balance between really pretty, I still have some graphics that are made for me by my designer. And then I mix in some people want to see just what I'm doing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that that mix is really important. But when you're starting, just sharing exactly, if it's going to help somebody, just share it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. I still have spelling mistakes sometimes, and that makes people think I'm real or whatever. But all of that, just as long as people are getting the message, mm -hmm. seeing it out there, and then contacting you. And I think that's the most important part. We're always stuck on, oh, it has to be perfect. Oh, I can't post all of this. And actually, who cares? Even if I, you know, if my following, if, if, if I post something wrong, I'll just delete it. They're not going to, people are going to forget about it. It's not the end yeah. of the world. So I think we place too much emphasis on it sometimes. It's important, but it's not, it's not your only marketing tool too. Yeah. I think that's, um, you know, it gives a lot of people relief to know that because uh, people yeah. are so stressed sometimes with well, yeah. uh, growing their social media following. So stressed and really, um, yeah, I'd say really it's, it's interesting because it's not, you know, that Instagram could die tomorrow or, or Facebook. And it, mm. we always say emails are, are lists are gold, but they really are more important. A lot of other things are important. So keep growing your Instagram and your social, whatever you use, but also have other mm. avenues to get to get your message out. Yeah. So right now, typically, how do you move your Instagram followers to your email list? Like what do you uh, give them so that they can join your email list? I still need tips on that too. <laughs> I'm always learning. But I took a couple courses and I have now I have lead magnets. So I have mm -hmm. um, like a, a couple lead magnets, depending if you're interested in business, like a, a, to help you organize your receipts or a packing list for more lifestyle. So it depends. So that really helps get people on my list, um, sharing, you know, exclusive opportunities, things like that. But I'm, I'm still learning that as well, because I need to keep growing my email list, too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing these tips, uh, Jane. So what's your, going to be your, uh, you know, a big purpose or mission for your business in the upcoming years? You know, I don't think it's going to change much more than it, what it is now. Just mm -hmm. inspire more people, grow, um, just have a bigger reach and get my, get more people on my team so I can help uh, maybe bring the system into organizations or maybe schools mm -hmm. even, but just broaden the reach. That's what I'm, I'm interested in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you are in the perfect 
uh, direction uh, to achieve that. So uh, from all the work that you've done so far, Jane, has there been a moment where you felt that, yes, I'm finally living my purpose? Any like client story or anything which really moved you when you felt that, wow, I'm doing my life's work? Well, I read this quote by um, Jen Sincero. I don't know if anybody listeners know that, but she wrote the, um, the badass books. And one yeah. of her uh, quotes on her Instagram was, um, uh, when your goals become like, when your goals become your reality. And that's kind of, I always wanted to do this. I didn't know how. So sometimes I reflect back and think, oh my gosh, like this is actually, I wanted to be a speaker. I wanted to have a digital business and now I do. So looking back and um, just reading my own bio sometimes, I'm like, wow, I've accomplished so much. And I think that a mm-hmm. lot of us, we don't do that. We don't read our own bios or resumes and think we've done so much. And of course, client testimonials are always the icing on top, but uh, I think a lot of us have achieved our goals and are living it, but we don't um, reflect on that. Yeah, I think sometimes just pausing and looking back at the journey that we have walked, I think that itself could be so fulfilling. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Great, Jane. So let us know where can our listeners, viewers find out more about you and your work? Yes, yeah, so I'm really active on Instagram, like we talked about, Organized Jane. Uh, organized with a Z or a Z if you're from America or Canada. Um, and then my website is organizedjane.com. So really simple. I'd love for your listeners to you know send me a DM and I have so many resources I can give them for whatever area of their life or business they're interested in. Perfect. I'll have all the links right below in the show notes. Thank you once Perfect. again for coming on Experts on Purpose, Jane. Thank you so much for having me.